By the time the protests had stopped the indiscriminate excavation of the wood key area by diggers, several lorry loads had been removed and were said to have been taken to the Irish town area here. This aroused the curiosity of local man Brian Siggins, and he takes up the story from there. Uh, well, as you, as you know, I was <coughs> leaving rubbish down to the dump. That's on the far end of the Rings End dump here. And as I was going along the road here, we spotted one of these pieces of timber sticking up out of the mount of dirt that had been piled along the side of the road. And uh, to me, they looked like timber that had come from the wood key uh, excavations because I've been looking at them for over oh, years now since they started. And the uh, timber had split, uh, coming out the damp air didn't split, and, and it just looked like it. So I went over and had a look. And uh, before I knew where I was, I was finding 12th, 14th century pieces of pottery, 16th century pipes, pieces of leather, uh, loads of animal remains, um, antlers, antlers with uh, saw marks on them, like this piece here, and uh, oyster shells. Uh, and the most impressive piece of uh, stuff we found, uh, the two lads walking around with, with me at the time, was a, a small metal crucible. And since, since I left it into the museum, they discovered it's a 14th century crucible used for melting uh, bronze. And uh, they were very pleased to get it. Then later on, they got a, a young archaeologist to uh, classify the stuff for them and mount the exhibition in the museum, Marie Johnson. And she's made a lovely job of it. And she's uh, laid it out uh, in groups. Uh, leather walk, pottery, pipes, and animal remains. We know that the significance of finding a Viking store. Well, not many stores have been found in the course of the excavation. As far as I know, only one support was found about nine years ago. And uh, this sword is in much better condition, according to what we are told anyway in the newspapers. It has decorated hilt. Now, a, a sword was more or less a status symbol. It was a warrior's most important piece of equipment. And unlike other, other domestic uh, iron work, uh, it was always highly decorated. It often carried the name of the manufacturer of the blade and sometimes the name of the owner on the hilt. And it was a, a highly decorated uh, piece of craftsmanship. To one side of this public refuse area, Dublin Corporation have dumped mounds of wood key earth, and there the sword was found. Well, of course, that's a scandal because all along, uh, people, archaeologists mainly, have claimed that this is the most important site and should be fully excavated. Now, we were told that if anything of importance was found, excavation would continue. But because nothing of importance was found, that part of the site was totally destroyed. And this goes to prove that there were important finds still in it, which are now completely out of context. But what difference would it make if you had found the sword on the site as against in the dump? Well, if it had been found on the site, we would have got the context, context that it belonged to. It may have been in a grave, it may have been in a house. But if it was in a grave, you would also get the skeleton of the warrior, and you would get the rest of his equipment, all together in one piece. If it was found in a house, it would be part of the context of the house, you would have the structure, you would have the sword, and you would have all the other household objects that are found in, in every one of these houses. And you might have an approximate date for the house, 